Today I want to show you this, the Silicon Graphic O2. Unfortunately there is a mess here because I have like a million projects going on at the same time. I'm working with zip drives, trying to get that to work on a Macintosh. I'm repairing a, a classic logic board, Macintosh classic logic board. Amiga 500 keyboard. Trying to repair a PS2. I didn't even have time to open this one yet. <laughs> trying to make games in Lisp. This is a very good book. I recommend it. And uh, well, I got a new memory upgrade for my Amiga 500 Plus. I'm uh, trying to work out what the problem with this uh, uh, floppy drive is. Also for the Amiga 500 Plus. And yeah, I got some new components. I'm trying to build my own uh, interface to the A500, um, ABC80. So that will also come. Uh, so yeah, I didn't have time to clean, unfortunately. But this is the star of today's show. So, the Silicon Graphics O2. It has a CD-ROM here, you can open it. I think the button is, yeah, here it is. Uh, power, volume up and down here. And if you turn it to the side, you have video I.O. and uh, audio I.O. So you have input and output for composite audio, left, right, video and S-video. On the back here, you have over here input for digital camera. You have two hard disk drives. This is the main one. This is the auxiliary hard disk drive. Some empty slot here for some reason and lots of I.O. ports. What I love about this computer is how modular it is. So if you take this little protective sheet away, like so, you can actually take the entire video I.O. out, like so. And here you see the ports. And then you just pop it in again. Same thing with the main hard disk drive here. Take it out. And it's a SCSI interface hard disk drive. 9.1 gigabytes. Wow, that's a lot. Who will ever need 9.1 gigabytes? I mean, that's, uh, you will feel, never feel that hard disk drive. Let's see where the hole is. Uh, there it is. No? Yep. There it is. And the other hard disk drive, also 9.1 gigabyte. Like so. See if I can get that one in easier. Yeah. And then we have a lever here, but I don't really know what this one is supposed to release. Maybe it's the... No, it's not the cover. Uh, I don't know. power supply unit and I guess yeah you have to push this one to the side and the entire power supply comes out so this is just like building Lego let's see like so yeah So the owner uh, that I got this from told me that the um, CMOS battery has to be replaced. But it should be able to boot nonetheless, so let's try it. Unfortunately, I don't have the original display to this or the original keyboard or mouse. Uh, I only have this machine. However, I have got lots of other things. Oh. 
Oh, hey. I got the bag. With... The owner's manual. So this is how you use your silicon graphic workstation. Tells you... Well, I can probably read in here what that mysterious lever is doing. Quick start guide. You just plug in the keyboard and mouse and then you are ready to roll. Let's see if I can get it all in camera. Leave it like that. Oops. Yeah, just plug everything in. Oh, this way, it is this way. Just plug everything in and you are ready to go basically. Power cord, SCSI cable. And the silicon graphics software library. And this is a lot of disks. It's like, it's all the IRIX, uh, the operating system is IRIX, it's all the disks for that. And lots of utility software. And I don't know, this is probably. One, 14 disks, yeah, it's 14 software disks. I wish I had a software library like this to my uh, son. Some more paperwork. Um, this is IRIX admin disk and file, well, it's how to use IRIX. This is IRIX Interactive Desktop. Graphical user interface. Woo! Amazing. An extra external hard disk drive. SCSI, of course. And one thing left. Let's see if I can get it out. Yes, a big box. And is it something else here? Oh, huh. even more discs. So, yeah, these are probably not legal copies, but yeah, silicon graphics tools, IRIX uh, freeware plus docs, LOL. It's always nice to have. Let's see what's in this one then. Some paperwork. This is the fake, span, fake space pinch glove. So it's a sort of a virtual reality thing where you can use this glove to model uh, 3D objects. Oh, lots of cables. I'm not going to take those out. Some power supplies, uh, a big black box with, uh, it says right and left on it. And then it's a serial uh, connection. So I'm guessing it's the right and left glove. And again, uh, some uh, serial cables. This is Pinch Glove Software, fake space. Oh, so <laughs> this is software distributed on tape, it seems like. Yeah. Look at that. Huh. I don't, I'm not sure how to open it, but yeah, you can see the reels kind of there so yeah software on tape and the gloves themselves which have some sort of cable coming out of it and a little bit too small for my hands 
and it has some kind of conductive plating going on here on the fingertips. So, yeah, it's cool. But I will let this be for now. Uh, put the paperwork back, and we will just uh, try to we will just try to start the computer assets. So this Silicon Graphic O2 requires a PS2 keyboard, which I have here. A VGA, VGA output for the display, which I have here. And a PS2 mouse, which I have tons of, but they are all in the basement. So I'm just going to try to fire it up with only the keyboard uh, set up and see what it says. Well, this is certainly most the most comfortable recording position, but uh, it will have to do. So, here we go. It's making some noise. And the screen is still black. Still black. Oh, something is happening. It's adjusting. I mean, the screen is adjusting. And it's making even more noises. It sounds uh, like the second hard disk drive is firing up. Hmm. Oh! Haha! <laughs> Welcome to O2, Silicon Graphics Computer System. Starting up the system. And out adjusting the resolution again. IREX release 6.5. Five, copyright 1987 to 2002, Silicon Graphics Incorporated. Nice. Uh, this is the first time I'm using IRIX actually. And IRIX was used in the movie Jurassic Park. If you remember the scene where the little girl, sorry I forgot her name, says, Oh, I know this, uh, this is a Unix system. It's IRIX she's using, and it is from Silicon Graphics. System is still coming up. And the little LED on the computer uh, turned from amber to green. You see down there. Yeah, now it's green. Well, this got old quickly. Uh, let's see how long time it takes. I will fast forward until it comes up. Ah, finally it's coming up. So it seems to be starting uh, some kind of HTTP server, Apache, uh, in the USR folder. This is all very Unix-like.
login name. Well, I have no ID. Maybe I have to ask the guy I bought it from what the root password is. Uh, I totally forgot that. I love that it says deep blue there in the corner. And of course I cannot move the pointer because I don't have a mouse uh, put in, uh, connected. I will uh, go to the basement in a couple of days and see if I can find it. Uh, but I just wanted to see if it started at all. And it seems to do that and it's booting up uh, IRIX, the operating system. So, login name, let's try to put Agie. Oh, and uh, hmm. you have logged into the following systems in the past uh, on which your home directory is mounted Stargate. Uh, I get Stargate is some kind of network drive. Uh, so the slash home folder or root slash home folder was on an NFS drive and now it cannot reach it. So, yeah, create new environment, I guess. Let's see. Oh my god. This looks similar to common desktop environment, but it's somehow better looking, I would say. And uh, uh, keyboard doesn't seem to do much, and I don't know any keyboard shortcuts. I can't go to terminal because it's booting into a GUI graphic user interface, so I cannot go to the um, terminal. Well, I just have to find found um, a mouse then. I know that this video would be incomplete without, uh, looking, uh, without looking at the hardware and I actually took a look inside the manual how to get the system board out. And it is this Mr. Lever that I saw before. So let's take it out like so. So here we have an expansion, a uh, PCI slot. And you think that PCI is just a PC standard uh, for PC computer, but no, it actually says PCI here. Not PCI Express, of course, but still. I've also found out that this could be removed by pulling a lever here, like so. And it's just a pass through. So it's the same PCI slot down here. Here you see four memory modules and it can ex be expanded to up to eight memory modules. So I might try to find some more memory for this. Here is the CPU card and the Silicon Graphic uh, O2 user MIPS processor, MIPS. Uh, which, of course, I don't think any modern computer use nowadays. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this entire card is the CPU. And it goes into a PCU slot down here. And then you can see there are two heat sinks. So it's probably a coprocessor or something uh, that helps, um, helps the main processor. And there's a little crystal here. And it says, I can't really read the text, it's too small for my eyes, R143HAB9. So I guess that's 143 megahertz. No, that can't be wrong, that can't be right. 
Uh, I know, because I checked it up, that these run uh, normally at 350 megahertz. So this crystal must, uh, I don't know, it, it, it regulates a clock uh, for the CPU, of course, but I don't know how to read that code. I have to Google it. Silicon graphics computer system. It's a nice little thing there. And this uh, board uses, um, well, the, the graphic capabilities of the board is shared. How should I put this? <laughs> the graphic card, so to speak, shares memory with the main memory. So, you know, in modern graphic cards, they have their own uh, memory. So you might buy, a, I don't know, a NVIDIA uh, G, uh, GeForce GTX card with uh, four gigabytes of RAM or something. I don't know. But on this machine, the GPU and the CPU shares the same memory. <laughs> there, that's what I wanted to have said. So that's a bit... Uh, well, it was common for the days, I suppose. Um, a bit funny. I don't know about the CMOS battery. Uh, here's the real-time clock. Uh, I cannot really see... Well, it's probably the sem similar solution as the Sun workstation that I have, uh, where the uh, CMOS battery is integrated in one of the chips, and it's probably integrated in this real-time clock chip here because it's very thick but I don't know if it really needs to be replaced to be honest because as we saw the operating system boots and I don't really need a real-time clock because I can just look at my mobile to see what the clock is and if I want to go out on the internet I can use some uh, network uh, time syncing thing network time uh, service to get the time right before I uh, attempt to access anything on the internet. So yeah, I don't think uh, that will actually be needed. Here, <laughs> on the CPU card, I saw it's a little bodge wire. I don't know if you can see it, it's running from here to down here, a little blue wire. Oh, come on, focus camera. So, it looks to be original, but <laughs> looks uh, looks like a bodge, yeah. That's fun. So yeah, that's the main uh, processor board. And uh, you have already seen the, the hard disk drive and uh, everything else before. So yeah, that's it. There is the back plane with everything taken out. So it's just a slot for the processor board. It's probably a PCI and SCSI both in that same connector. Uh, here with the hard disk drive uh, base are, you have two SCSI ports and here with the uh, graphic input or kind of where you connect your camera when you want to edit videos. Here's just a normal PCI slot in the back and here is a, here where the power supply was here and it's just a power supply, supply slot. And yeah. And for all your silicon graphic nerds out there, here's a close-up of this batch. Yeah, that's the money shot. Yeah. O2. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's all for this time. I will show the operating system and software some other time because I don't want to make my episodes one hour long anymore and this is already long enough so enjoy and see you later and uh, <laughs> by the way don't uh, forget to subscribe and like if you like this video yeah uh, that's it <laughs> bye